So namaste, welcome everyone. And uh, you're right, Saina, it's been, it feels like a really long time last year. So um, happy new year to everyone. Um, <clears throat> and I uh, just want to express my gratitude at being here as well for this, in this community as well. I was uh, really moved by uh, what Doreen was saying uh, as I joined, which was about fear of, um, if I heard correctly, the fear of fully allowing um, what is pos possible for us as human beings, that um, highest state, the simplest state of all the awakened state. And um, it touched a chord in me that um, I remember when the desire became stronger than the fear and uh, it wasn't that way around for a long time. The fear was definitely greater. And then the desire just became uh, greater and greater. And eventually, no matter how strong the fear, there's something that bursts through, isn't there? And if you are um, kind of resonating with these words, that desire is everything. The desire to experience whatever we can experience as a human being. I think we're naturally curious by nature as human beings and uh, spirituality perhaps then becomes about exploring our curiosity rather than trying to reach some goal or some end point in our uh, evolution. And there's two uh, pieces of um, writing that I want to share with you, which you've probably heard before, but they were pieces of writing that just um absolutely uh lit this fire of uh desire inside me and i want to share them with you <clears throat> you've probably heard them before anyway but just in case and even if you have I i'm going to read it anyway because i love um i love reading it this first one is from the uh ashtavakra gita and it is the chapter called uh, my own splendor <clears throat> and it says, with the pincers of truth, I have plucked from the dark corners of my heart the thorn of many judgments. I sit in my own splendor. Wealth or pleasure, duty or discrimination, duality or non-duality, what are they to me? What is yesterday, tomorrow, or today? What is space or eternity? I sit in my own radiance. What is the self or the not self? What is thinking or not thinking? What is good or evil? I sit in my own splendor. I sit in my own radiance and I have no fear. Waking, dreaming, sleeping, what are they to me? Or even ecstasy. What is far or near, outside or inside, gross or subtle? I sit in my own splendor. Dissolving the mind or the highest meditation, the world and all its works, life or death, what are they to me? I sit in my own radiance. Why talk of wisdom? These three ends of life are oneness. Why talk of these? Now I live in my heart. And uh, when I first heard those words, read those words, and then heard them later, there was just this intense, intense desire. And that's the idea behind a good uh, scripture, isn't it? That something bursts forth from that. I have to know that place where even ecstasy doesn't matter, where even the world and all that it could give me is not valued more than this. This Even this can overcome anything where this place, what is this radiance? What is this splendor that uh, 
Ashtavakra is talking about here. And it just, something ignited inside me when I first uh, exploded even. I had to know from that point on, this desire just became a raging inferno. And I didn't care what mind was saying at that point. I didn't care what the fear was behind holding, or seemingly holding me back. And uh, I hope when you hear those kind of words as well, it's like, what is that place? Where is that place inside us that is so radiant, so wonderful, so splendid that someone could write such words which would ignite such passion and desire to kind of experience that. I wanna read these words by Rumi as well. It's very short, but again, it, after reading these words, just something inside, and you've probably heard them before, but let's, let's listen again. That when hearing them, something just changes inside and I'd, ask you to just let these words uh, fuel that desire, that all-consuming, raging inferno. So Rumi says, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. And that's an extract from a, a longer um, part of a poem. But when I heard those words the first time, I had to know what it was like for the soul to lie down in that grass. You know, what, what is he talking about what is he talking about can you feel hopefully as i'm talking something getting really really excited inspired alive passionate and can you just allow that a little bit more today than you did yesterday this all-consuming desire to know that field and to lie down in that grass what does that even mean really out beyond the ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, beyond the opposites, beyond duality and non-duality as concepts. And even out beyond any ideas that it's a hard place to reach, that there's some reason why you can't reach it or that you're not worthy of it. Because along with that fear, for me also came unworthiness when I thought about this place for want of a better word, placeless place. That desire eventually transcends all of these obstacles that we think we're not ready, that we think we're not worthy, that we think it's gonna cost us too much, that we think we won't be able to interact in the world afterwards or even care about the world, or that we won't be able to hold down our job once we've uh, lied down in the grass, or that we won't be able to be a good parent, or that we won't even care about anything, that we'll just want to withdraw from the world, and all these reasons that our mind gives us. And when that desire becomes strong enough, where you have to know, you have to lie down in that grass, no matter what. And there's a kind of a, whatever it takes comes into our heart. Then there's nothing that can stop you from that point. It has to be, it has to happen. You could even say that uh, the soul has already lied down at that point, perhaps just hasn't realized yet. It certainly was like that for me. And why would you want to lie down in that grass? You know, what, what is the benefit of that? What would be better than experiencing the world through our ideas about it? Why is reality so awesome and uh, preferred by those who have experienced it over uh, the virtual reality in our head, what we think is going on? 
these words like splendor and radiance and you know even where ecstasy means nothing i would give that up easily to experience this splendor this oneness this place this field then there is something that's possible for each of us to experience, to live in and as. All it takes is this desire, this desire. Firstly, to know that it's possible. And you already know that. And then just to fuel this desire, the last and the first desire we ever have as human beings, to realize our own innate freedom and to experience that freedom. And for me, it was that moment when this desire became stronger than fear and unworthiness. And I began to taste, uh, taste this field, this emptiness, this uh, living inside my heart, living in my heart. And the moment we touch upon it, the desire becomes even more immense. So... The reason I'm saying this is because if you find that you're kind of obsessed with this, that if you find that you are kind of thinking about this all the time or as much as is humanly possible, that's normal. You know, that is the desire, isn't it? That's the desire raging inside you. And what if that was all it took for that desire to become stronger than any ideas that you can't do this or that you shouldn't? or that you're not ready, or that you're not good enough in that. It's, you know, I never solved any of those problems. I never found out beforehand if I would still care about the world, or my children, or my relationships, or my finances, or any of that. I just had to find out. I had to know. And of course, afterwards, I found out I cared more about those things fell back in love with everything that is my life and the world and all of you and everything. So what else do you need to get in order before you experience this? Do you really need guarantees? Your mind says, you know, yes, but we shouldn't do this until we know it's safe. And <clears throat> we shouldn't do this until we know that we're worthy. But you can never reach the end of that. You can only experience it and see that you're already ready, free, worthy, whole and complete. In this field, this place before ideas, this heart space, this being, this oneness, will totally um, change and transform your whole existence. It will right every wrong and heal every hurt and <clears throat> solve every issue that you've got going on right now. So don't wait for anything. Don't wait to experience this. There is no how to experience this, only desire. I want this, I have to, I have to. And I only have words really to kind of communicate with, but hopefully you can feel the strength and the passion in that word, have, I have to. There's no other option for me now. There is nothing that will satisfy my soul other than lying down in the grass. And when I lie down in the grass, I might get back up again once or twice, but I will go lie back down again as soon as I realize, you know, I might have done that a few times. But what if there's nothing stopping you other than that? What if there's nothing stopping you other than uh, mind's ideas about why you shouldn't do it now? Intense desire, intense curiosity, passion is a portal, a doorway that will open up this awakened state for you. 
I mean, it's kind of my role here, isn't it, to kind of ignite this passion. And that's what I'm doing right now. That there is something so amazing, so extraordinary, so profound that we can experience as human beings. And it's also completely ordinary, always being here and always being what you already are. And if it is what you already are, how long will it take you to lie down in the grass, to move beyond those ideas, to move beyond concepts? I discovered that there was a world of experience beyond concepts, beyond thoughts, that thought could never really touch because it was a kind of filter dimming down my experience, my um, enjoyment, my passion and all of that. Once I recognized there was something else to experience, this desire just became really, really strong. So what is your favorite way to inspire yourself? What is it? Is it listening to a particular teacher? Is it reading a particular piece of writing? Is it going to a particular place? Where is that desire strongest for you? Desire means to give birth to, to sire, to give birth to. Something is gonna come out of that desire. And when you're desiring the highest, it has to happen. My desire is just a tiny bit stronger than the reasons why you can't. It has to happen. When a little bit more credence is given to the desire than to the obstacles, it has to happen. There's no way it can't. And uh, Rumi and Ashtavakra and uh, the Ribu Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, all the classic scriptures, Avadut Gita, there's so many of them, are all amazing ways to fuel that desire, aren't they? What can you listen to that can feed your heart, fuel your passion, make it burning so that it has to happen? You have that sense inside you Maybe as I'm talking, you're, you're starting to really feel it that you have to do this. You have to. Not as in, I have to try to get this or become this or realize this. As in, this is now my only option. I have to. And I'm going to allow my desire to become stronger than any reason why not. Is going to happen anyway, this breaking through into this heart space. It's just a matter of how much we're resisting it. It cannot be stopped because the desire of the heart to realize its own freedom has to be fulfilled. The only thing we can do as human beings is slow it down with our resistance, our unworthiness, our perceived unworthiness. So what can you throw out today? Throw it on the fire, in the fire. What reasons, why not? What can you um, add to the fire as fuel? What if it is already your destiny to be free and there's nothing you can do about that? There's also nothing you can do to mess that up. But if there's nothing you can do to stop this awakening thing that's occurring right now. Does it matter then if you're scared? Can that really stop it? Does it matter if you feel unworthy or not ready? Can that really stop it? Only if you say it can. There's this myth that went around my mind for such a long time that Awakened beings have finally managed to break through the fear 
to reach worthiness and all of that before they woke up. And it's just not so. They just went ahead anyway. This desire begins to pull. The desire for the awakened state begins to pull you so strongly. So strongly that it becomes all that matters. So if you've reached that point of kind of crazy obsession about it, good. There is absolutely no experience on this planet, even if we went up into space and uh, went out into the universe that would match how it feels to be yourself. There's just nothing that can touch that, come even close. But then of course, being that authentic self that you are, the state of freedom that you already are, you tend to have the, one of the best human experiences anyway. You can have it all. A life of passion and purpose and wonder and awe and joy of peace and clarity and wisdom, compassion. So what's your reason why it's not going to happen? What's your mind saying? And are you going to listen? Are you going to fuel this desire? Don't you want to know what it's like to lie down in that grass? And there's a softening that occurs. Maybe you can feel it happening now, a softening. I don't want to fight anymore. I don't want to strive anymore. I don't want to seek or push or resist anymore. I just want to open. I want to soften my heart and open it up to whatever is here right now. I want to take down my defenses. I don't even want them anymore. They're no good against the self anyway. The self will break through them anyway. You can only slow it down. What's it like to be unguarded with this intense desire, open, curious, having to know, having to? What's that like? There is an immensity and an intensity that is you, that is all of this. All of this is what you are. If I could only show you what you are, but I only have words. So hopefully these words have uh, planted a seed in your heart. What if it only came down to desire? What if that was the only missing puzzle piece, intensity of desire? And there was nothing else you could do that would make a difference except that. And the scriptures, the writings of all the awakened beings, all the mystical poetry and all of that are amazing at inspiring that desire. I'd urge you to, um, if you have a favorite piece, then dive in there get curious about it. What does this mean? What is this like? What is it like to experience this? Use it as a doorway and go right through. It's sometimes um, challenging to feel how I feel and uh, not go around and sort of 
tell people that they really need to experience this. It's sometimes challenging to uh, watch human beings missing out on the joy and the love and the freedom and the compassion. But with you guys, I can say this because, you know, this is what you want as well. So thank you for allowing me to express it. And I know I get a little carried away, but it's um, where my heart lies too. Uh, so I thought if there, uh, anybody had any questions or anybody needs help with anything, um, feel free to ask or uh, put your hand up on Zoom or just, uh, just ask. We have some time to uh, see if anybody needs any help with anything or is struggling or is breaking through. Helen, yeah? Hey, Helen. I didn't want to miss a chance to ask you a question. And I, um, it, it's not even fully formed, but uh, I thought that those are the best help. ones, I think. You know? <laughs> um, I'm noticing, um, I've not noticed before that there is, feels to be like a level of guilt that, well, it's not subconscious anymore, but seems mm. to be guiding some decisions even decisions like um well even things like if i think about wanting more joy or yeah. and the things i really love like walking in nature and doing yoga and all those things is i can see that there's a guilt there of no you shouldn't be doing that you should be mm -hmm. sitting you shouldn't wish for things for the person um there's like a it feels a bit like guilt and it's popping up in all different areas. I can see there are lots of decisions I make that this person is making that are more born of like a guilt. And not, I don't think I've heard you talk about guilt. So I wondered if you could share, share on that. Hmm. Guilt, guilt is one of those that's quite um, insidious, isn't it? It kind of sneaks in there and gets right under your skin. And before you know it, it's kind of running your whole life. And uh, I remember having this moment of, wow, I feel guilty about pretty much everything, you know, everything I've ever done and probably everything I'm going to do. And uh, right now, everything, you know, there was this basic element of my life where um, it was just, uh, you don't deserve to be happy and free because because you, you haven't made up for past errors yet or something like that. And any decision, anything that I was choosing was just overridden to, to make it harder for myself or chosen subconsciously, of course, to make it harder for myself. And I couldn't allow any joy. Um, I could let myself have a bit of peace every now and again, but not joy and definitely not love, you know, because I, I wasn't deserving of that yet, you know, some kind of undertone to my whole existence. And it's really based guilt on this guilt is based on this sense that um, there's something wrong with you, right? Some sense that you, uh, that there's something that you need to fix about yourself. That somehow you've gone off the path or something like that. And, you know, if we were kind of believing that, then um, of course we wouldn't be able to allow ourselves to have any joy or any consistent joy, at least with that. So if you can kind of just examine that guilt and, you know, what is it actually, is it actually valid? You know, is there, is there a really good reason to not allow joy in your life and happiness and peace and love and all of that? It's one of those fundamental questions, isn't it? You know, what, what is it, what is my reason for not allowing myself to be happy? Why do I need to keep sabotaging myself? Can you get a sense of it? Yeah, because even listening to you talk about desire, it's so beautiful and it's just like, oh, there's like a feeling like bad for not having that level of desire. Yeah, I can't get <laughs> that level of desire that, that she had and yeah, I'm never going to get to that. <laughs> yeah. I actually think it's here, but there's just, you know, I feel bad if I say no to going out. I feel bad yeah. if I'm pouring myself into a book but actually books for me are one way of just 
slipping into that space so that I can just see how it rules so much but it's based on this flawed idea isn't it that there's something there's some reason why you shouldn't enjoy yourself right now yeah. whether that's sitting and reading a book or going out with your friends or whatever it looks like there's this sense that there's some reason why you shouldn't do that right now or have that or be that and it's nonsense isn't it it's absolute nonsense and it's it's the biggest pandemic there is pretty much every human being thinks there's something wrong with them until they don't and just to see how much it's running your life it is starting to kind of really become more aware of it and say, wow, this is just all over my existence, isn't it? This whole thing. I just can't give myself a break at all from that. And why is that? Do I want to keep doing that? You know, has, has punishing yourself and denying yourself joy actually worked anyway? Have you ever managed to reach a place where you go, now I actually deserve to be happy? Is there such a place where you're ever going to reach where mind finally says, okay, now you've suffered enough. You can dive into freedom now. So just thinking like this just fuels that desire even more, doesn't it? What the mind is trying to do to reach a point where you feel able to accept this, it's never going to happen. You just have to accept it anyway. You just go around the guilt, you know. You can't fix a problem that doesn't really exist, can you? You can't fix an error that doesn't exist within you. Can't hear these things enough or enough times, you know. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you so it's, much. It's the worst, the worst thing that we all deal with, isn't it? This sense living every day thinking that there's something wrong with us i mean how painful is that and yet we all tolerate it for a long time and maybe there's just no way to conclude that you know mm. does your feeling guilty help anyone else keeping yourself small does that help anyone does it serve humanity not so much. Eh? <laughs> no. Oh, what would that splendor and radiance look like shining through you? Wouldn't that inspire people and help people and motivate people, encourage people and make them feel safe and loved and warm? And, and here's a mind bender. What if it's already shining through you and you haven't noticed? What if pretty much everyone else can see it except you? That is a mind bender. Yeah, something to ponder. Thank you so much. I hope that helps to kind of touch yeah. upon the, yeah. Always so grateful for you. Thank you. Eventually you just step out of trying to fix that and you go over here where you're already happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take care. Anyone else want to uh, share anything or ask anything? <clears throat> is anyone struggling with anything or has anyone broken through something i love hearing about your successes too I feel like I had a mini breakthrough with, well, maybe it's not so many, I don't know, because this, this um, painful um, comes, it's, it's an I am bad belief, but it comes in the form of I am selfish. I was told that a lot as a child, mm -hmm. you're so selfish. Mm -hmm. And, and I was re realizing there's a certain scenario cropping up in my life where I was like, oh, I think I'm being selfish. <laughs> And then I was realizing there was there maybe that program's running. 
And then so your poem, which Rumi has always touched me. Rumi does something to my heart. My soul is just, mm. and so, you know, where it says out beyond the wrongdoings and the right doings, there's an, a field and I'll meet you there. And I was really in that part where you're in the field, you're laying in the grass and it's like, you just took me there. And I was merging with the whole field as if I am the field. Mm -hmm. And then all of, a, all of a sudden it came to me that I'm neither selfish nor not selfish. It's just like the out beyond the right and the wrong. So out mm -hmm. beyond the selfish and the not selfish, I'm just the field. And so then the, all the, the, the tears were coming of a recognition of, you know, just this, what I am as the field. And so I feel like that was, that was a breakthrough of sorts. Because yeah. I, Cause I these earlier, are, these are opposites, aren't they? Concepts that we hold on to in spirituality. I, I'm selfish and I need to be selfless. You yes. Know, and, uh, I strive. Like I'm I bad. If I'm, <laughs> like, yeah. like like oh that person volunteers and they give so much of their time and well mm -hmm. I get paid to do this and so you know I'm not as giving and and so then I was totally judging myself like I'm not that giving and then that feels really icky like yeah. super yucky and and, I've and met I was getting really super... down on myself until you're yeah. little it was almost like a meditation I felt like it was a meditation with that whole roomy poetry and that's what it felt like for me. It's like those those four four words. I'll meet you there. It's like oh, oh, you know what does that what does that cost me? It costs me this these ideas of uh, right and wrong and selfless and selfish and good and bad and you know all of that, doesn't it? And that seems like a high price to pay at first until I tell you, no, actually, it's not really. You know what what's out beyond those ideas and. I think one of the, the traps of a um, spiritual path is this desire to become selfless from this idea that we're selfish. Exactly. Um, yeah. Because you buy that idea, I'm selfish, you've got a whole, you know, trying to get somewhere going on again, haven't you? Yeah. It's like when you bite into the one, you're biting into both. Like yeah. they're two sides of the same coin. And as long as you want one side, you, you, it's, it's like a package deal. And another breakthrough that I had was it just felt like this infusion of the desire that you're speaking, or you were speaking of it as an inferno. Yeah. And, and there was these images of, you know, certain times in my life and ways of being, and, and that I was just like, yeah, just, you know, yeah. kind of let it burn. And I was feeling and didn't you that feel great when you were just, doing that. Oh, yeah. It was growing. Uh, didn't you feel every time you felt unbridled desire, just unlimited desire, where you've just really, really been on fire? You feel amazing. And it, you know it, it's intense, like desire. you said. Yeah. yeah. You said it, you said it perfectly. It's intense. And it just mm -hmm. wants to, I don't know, it definitely wants to go beyond the the this border of the skin it wants yeah. to just fill up as much space as it can fill up so I, I thank you for that Helen it's always a treat to have you though always oh, so so thank lovely you. so so lovely. thank, thank you. you for sharing that sign I appreciate it wonderful lovely anyone else want to share or ask anything are we all bursting with desire it's too simple, isn't it? You know, just all I have to do is want this more than I'm scared of it. And uh, yeah. It took me a long time to figure that out. <laughs> if we, uh, if anybody wants to share anything. I should have brought my roomie book with me tonight. We could have Hi. dived into some more. Hi. I was just trying to log on a different device. I could share. Um. I love yes. the giraffe. I have to say, I love the giraffe. <laughs> okay, I can't even, let me see, turn on my. It's okay, it's fine. <laughs> so when I was seven, I did have this deep yearning for a teacher and for spiritual yeah. guidance. And it was so intense. And I started to consider, but perhaps um, I'm just, I'm causing pain for no reason. So I, um, I considered it for, uh, I don't know how long, a while. And 
I guess at the time I didn't know how to connect and ask correctly. It took me a while to learn how to ask properly, um, effectively. So I stopped it intentionally. And um, I also, uh, you know, I had a, a few years later, you know, that just happened to come happen. I had a handwriting analysis from, from a friend of a friend and they said, I don't dream. And what that means is that I, I, I come, you know, that I, I don't, um, I've sort of cut off that dreaming and hoping for things. And I, I feel like yeah. that is still a uh, part of my experience. I'm good at being practical, but I'm also been opening up to more joy, but it's also been bringing up all this sort of worldly joy stuff too, which is a distraction. So um, I'm not really sure how to think about well, that know, yet. Even if you're enjoying yourself doing worldly stuff, no, you're in still meditation. enjoying yourself. Like in meditation today, I just started imagining going on a camping trip and having okay. a nice time with a family that had no faces. It was just, I didn't even know what we looked like. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you and were I happy, like, right? You were happy. It was pleasant. Yeah. And I knew I was, I was daydreaming. I, knew, I was conscious of the fact, but I just chose to just go with it. And that, you know, whenever you're not resisting, whatever's going on, if I'm daydreaming, can I just do that? Like what, what is that so bad that we do that? Why is that so bad? You know, well, we used to do that as kids, it's supposed right? It's to be meditation time. That, that was the only reason. that I <laughs> Maybe that was your meditation today. Maybe that was it. This camping trip, right? With, with the family. It's, uh, it's the should and shouldn't of it, isn't it? I'm, I'm not, I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be doing meditation. And you know, maybe that was what's supposed to happen. If, if this desire is there for more joy and more excitement and here's some coming to you, even through just, just imagining, which is a huge thing. Can we let that happen? Can we enjoy it? Can I feel joy doing something that's not meditation? Or I feel totally restless, bored and frustrated doing my meditation as I think I should. And really we're only doing the meditation to feel happy anyway, to feel joyful anyway. You know what I'm getting at? It's like, and you've obviously, and I can't, and I can't believe, but I can't believe that at seven years old, you were looking for a spiritual teacher. Like, you know, I was worried about my zits and, uh, you know, trying to make friends at school and all that kind of stuff. And I had no clue. Uh, that's just outstanding, amazing. You know, and no wonder you had to shut it off a bit because it takes a while to form that kind of, uh, you know how to get that desire and that's where the fear comes isn't it that I I can't really allow myself my joy I think not knowing how to connect with that spiritual guidance was that is so painful like heartbreaking so painful. after a while yeah because and that's why we, we don't open up again afterwards because we it, it's the memory of that pain is so intense but you know now you're an adult and now you've found this group you found a way to ask and that it's all coming to you now isn't it and it's just softening that uh, defense mechanism around the heart what if you just let yourself do whatever felt best in any moment you know? i was thinking about that when i was listening to you earlier today i was realizing you know when i something that has become available to me is this um I can just Im imagine or connect with radiating light or joy towards whatever I'm doing and then everything is peaceful and it just is and then I can start remembering to do that more often yeah. and that could be my like there's so many things to <laughs> come up for me oh I could this and so sometimes yeah. it moves around a bit but that that would be a one a good focus also and isn't that the fun of it that it moves around a bit today it might be meditating or tomorrow it might be reading some Rumi, and the next day it might be just sitting daydreaming having fun next day it might be going for a drive somewhere the day after that eating ice cream like isn't it a kind of fun that it moves around a bit wouldn't it be yes. boring if it was the same thing all the time it's funny. I mean, in many ways, my life has been that simple and I can be, but then there's this worry that 
I'm not doing things in the practical world. <laughs> no, like I, I should. So maybe that's been cutting me off a bit. I think when like, you first allow joy through, begin to allow it through, there's a natural urge to just bask in it a little bit. And you might not be so interested in the kind of stuff that we have to do as a human being, but it will balance out after a little while. You know, when you find joy in more and more places, eventually you find it even in the what the mind would call mundane and ordinary and routine. There's joy even in that then. You'll find your way. You're already finding your way, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, if that looks like daydreaming right now, go for it. Absolutely. I think it's like keep going off track, but then when I stop, and investigate it all come like everything you say that comes to me you know too it's yeah it's all going to work out but it still makes a difference to hear it again to hear it oh yeah we all need to hear it don't we just just throw out that track now just do where go where the joy is inside yourself what do you want to do right now that gives you most joy and that'll just stay you know more and more it'll just be there like a like a best friend that never goes away of course, you had trouble letting down your defense mechanisms because this desire went unanswered, this strongest, most powerful desire. Of course you did. But now it's different, isn't it? Now you're safe to, to let that in. I can be with the pain of it too now. Yeah. Good. Without it overwhelming or confusing me. So, you just so have I to sort I... a few things out in the world and go through a few experiences before you could fully let this in you know and that's what's happened and now it's time it's happening isn't it yeah thank you do you realize how awesome you are no <laughs> something to i don't realize at. not awesome either i feel like it's whatever it is <laughs> lovely good to see you smiling and yeah thank you thank you appreciate you sharing Thank you. Would anyone else like to uh, to share or to ask a question? <clears throat> if we uh, if we feel we want to, we can just spend a few moments in the quiet and the silence might be a nice thing to do right now. Or oh, whatever brings you joy, we can do that right now. Peace. Let's just take a few moments just to really be here and center ourselves in this moment together here. Such a powerful group. And really enjoy being with each other. Maybe we can let down some defenses around our heart a bit more, if we feel ready. There isn't anything else to do than just be here. Just allowing the silence to quietness to refresh you and uplift you. As if somehow <clears throat> every time you breathe in, you're breathing in worthiness and fullness and completion and peace. So if we could actually just breathe that stuff in, fill ourselves up with it. And every time we exhale, we can just 
soften our defenses. We can soften our self-judgment. We can be nicer to ourselves. What if you are <clears throat> already radiant? What if you are that splendor? What if you are the field? And we're all just lying down in that grass together now. It was lovely to meet you here. And I hope you will stay here with me. Thank you, Sina. I will hand the mic back to you.